Not even Sonny Gray could stop the bleeding as the Cardinals fall in Milwaukee. And manager Ali Marmol sounds about as fed up with things as we are. Hear what he had to say on today's episode of Locked on Cardinal. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou, and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X, at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. This is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball. All of the info about the birds on the bat, as frustrating as it may be. All right, we're going to try to smile today. We're going to do our best to try to get through this and not get too angry. We're going to try to keep things light as best as we can. It is Friday. The weekend is here. That's great, right? Mother's Day is coming up. Let's let's think about mom. Does mom want us screaming and yelling? I don't know. She might especially if she's a Cardinals fan, because the St. Louis Cardinals 2024 season, oh boy, is it sinking fast. Last night in Milwaukee, you had your ace, you had your guy, Sonny Gray, on the bump, ready to go against a dude with three career MLB starts. Even with that advantage on your side, the Cardinals could not get a win. And worse yet, They weren't really all that competitive in this game whatsoever after the first inning. Sonny Gray did not have his best game. We know that. All right, clearly did not have his best stuff on Thursday. After the game, he was bombarded with questions uh, about what was the issue, what were the Brewers doing, and one of the questions that I thought was an interesting one was that uh, they asked him whether or not him having to move his start from – Wednesday, when he was supposed to be pitching in that day game against the Mets that got rained out, and instead had to move to Thursday where he's facing the Brewers, whether that had any effect on him. And he did say that it was tough preparing yourself to face a certain team all week long. Mindset, strategy, video, everything that was going into that start against the Mets, and then just wiped away, and he had one day to prepare for the Brewers. So he he wasn't like saying that was an excuse, but he said repeatedly that they just beat me. They just beat me. They were hitting my fastball early, which isn't something that happens often. Um, And he took it. He was like, they just beat me. And fair enough. Even the best of the best get rocked from time to time. Nobody's immune to that. But even if, (laughs) even if Sonny had tamed the Milwaukee Brewers lineup and gave up, let's just pretend he gave up two runs. This team still would have lost because They are terrible at hitting. And when your pitchers are under pressure that, you know, they go out there thinking if they don't throw a two-hit shutout every time they take the mound, that they're screwed, then things are going to go bad. They tend to hold the ball a little bit tighter. You know, like in Bull Durham, hold it like an egg. Hold it like an egg. No, when you're starting to stress about, man, if I miss this pitch and they get one run, we might not win this game. You're going to hold it a little bit tighter. You might try to throw it a little bit harder than you normally would. And that leads to a whole other host of problems. And I'm not saying that's what happened to Sonny. I'm not saying that he felt pressure because the Cardinals stink at hitting, that he felt like he had to do something different while on the mound. But you get where I'm coming from, right? This pitching rotation was built to have their starters go six innings and try to limit the damage to three runs over those six innings. That's what it was built to do. But if you can't score more than three runs in a game, you're going to lose a lot. That's what the Cardinals are doing. They're losing. They're losing a lot. Five in a row, to be exact, in eight of their last ten. They're a terrible ball club right now. They're now seven games back up, first place Milwaukee in the Central. Uh, They've lost all four games against the Brewers this year. Two of them just blowouts, not even close, including last night. They have the third worst record in the National League ahead of only the Marlins and the Rockies. The Marlins have already traded one of their best players to start the season. Luis Arise is now Padre. I already shipped him. That's where they are mindset-wise. The Rockies, who knows what the hell they're doing in Colorado? (laughs) We have no idea. But we thought last year was an anomaly for the Cardinals, right? 
that was the idea. Like, I mean, that weird, right? How did that happen? Ah, we'll be fine next year. But with each game that I watch of this ball club, I, I think we're starting to realize that maybe, maybe it wasn't an, an anomaly after all. Maybe this team just stinks. And as a Cardinals fan, that pains me to say. I don't want to admit that. I don't want to think that this team's terrible. I want to think that they're, ah, they're just in a rut. We're going to get out of it. Come on, boys. We got this. I want to stay positive. I do. I do. I'm not a negative dude. I'm really not. But there comes a point where you got to quit lying to yourself. You can keep rooting for them and say all the positive things you want about these guys. But the results on the field are what they are. And they have been for quite a long time now. I mean, I've had fans and listeners since last year telling me how bad things were and how this organization was in the toilet. I didn't want to hear that. I'm like, stop, stop. Come on, one year. We're going to be fine. But as we continue here, I'm starting to think you guys were right. I remember, I remember getting angry a few times last year about certain games and situations and things that happened last year. And I told myself that this year, if things do go bad, I was going to do my best to stay level-headed. I was going to do my best to be professional and let that side of me exude calmness and just be like, all right, here's what we're going to do. This is what this is what we can do. But the fan side of me, the guy down here in the heart, is fed up with this garbage. I'm tired of seeing this crap on the field. There is no life out there. There is no intensity. This team has as a whole, looks like they'd rather be anywhere but on a baseball field right now. And I know losing is not fun. But last night, it, it just seemed different. And manager Ali Marmol, who has been as even keel and calm as he can be in all of his postgame interviews, despite the feeble efforts of his players at the plate, hitters can't do anything, it seems like. And he said something last night that made me say, it's about damn time. Here's the quote from Ali. You get punched in the face. Punch back. It's the first inning. You got eight more chances. You have to be able to. And we just haven't been able to. Not just tonight, but in general. Hitting is hard. But at some point, the lineup just has to come together. There's a group of hitters that's not there yet. It's frustrating for everybody. At some point, frustration has to turn into a little bit of anger. We have to get it done. Today, we did not. Ali is a pretty chill guy. And some people hate that about him. Some people want to see him get all worked up and go all Lupinella berserk and pull a base out of, <laughs> out of the hole and flip it across the field. Maybe that's what this team needs. Maybe he needs to do something like that. Maybe he needs to kick some dirt on an ump shoes, get in the face of somebody, get tossed from a game. Maybe that maybe that is something that would work for this group of uh, players. I don't know. I mean, but if you saw the comment section, some people are just they're tired of hearing him just be as calm as he is about stuff. Um, but without raising his voice and yelling at a reporter and getting short with anybody or looking too angry. Cause you're starting to see him get a little bit that way. Cause it's the same questions every game because it's the same problems every game. He knows it's not the reporter's fault, but he's just, you know, he's tired of talking about the same problems. They, they need him fixed. I think Ollie said some pretty important things uh, in those statements. So I want to go through them uh, a little bit, a little bit closer. I want to do that next with you guys on locked on Cardinals. Remember the first day of school or let's say the first day of work. I mean, we're, we're all adults now for the most part, but so we're not thinking about school anymore. But how about the first day at a new job, right? Uh, you, you're wearing like a brand new outfit, just like you did when you were a kid going into your first day of school. You picked it out, laid it out the night before. You're all ready to go. And that way you look and you feel your best right when you walk through those doors for the first time, right? You got that confidence about you. You can get that instant confidence boost again about your clothing with Stitch Fix. And get this, Stitch Fix is going to hook you up with a stylist, okay? Yeah, you know, you hear about the stars have stylists. Oh, I'm wearing so-and-so today. They get a stylist that puts them in these outfits. That's what they're going to do for you. Stitch Fix gives you a stylist to help you out. They take in consideration 
the styles that you love, you love and uh, your size, like what it is you're, you're comfortable wearing. They, they take a look at your budget. They'll help you out there. They're not going to make you spend a whole lot of money when that's not something that you can do. And then they do the shopping for you. And you can order things when you want and how you want with no subscription required. Summer is coming quickly, guys. You're starting to feel the heat here in uh, St. Louis. And you know, you need to upgrade that closet. You, you need to do it, right? The wife's been telling you, dude, can you throw some of these old raggedy shirts out? Get them out of here. You need to get some new gear, right? So why not get it done the smart way? the efficient way by going with Stitch Fix. And if you don't love something, great part is you can just send it back. Send it back. Shipping returns and exchanges, they're always free. Absolutely free. So if you're ready to upgrade, which I think you are, and you want to upgrade a style that makes you feel as good as you look, get started today at stitchfix.com slash MLB and get $20 off your first fix. That's stitchfix.com slash MLB for $20 off. Stitchfix.com. So that's S T I. T-C-H-F-I-X dot com slash MLB must redeem within seven days of signing up. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume because they keep shouting at you? Well, make that switch to Locked On Sports today. Instead, it's free 24-7 sports streaming channel, and it's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. It's all streaming 24-7, so it doesn't matter what time you get home. You can watch it. It's on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day. And thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. I want to hear from you in the comments section. I want, I, think of me not as a therapist, <laughs> but think of me as somebody you can just vent to, like your best bud. All right, just unleash the fury in the comments. It's fine. I'm going to go through some of these and we're going to we're going to put them back out and uh, we're going to get through this stuff together because you deserve better. I deserve better. The Cardinals want to be better. They can't figure out how to get there, right? So we know Ali is a very loyal guy to his coaching staff, the team, to the organization. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. He seems to be one of those guys that is, you know, very team oriented. And, it, you know, it's we're not a room of individuals. You know, we are a group. We are one cohesive unit type of guy. So he's not likely to ever call out individual players unless your name is Tyler O'Neill, which he did last year. But we know how that went. Okay. And the statements that he made after the game, which we went through a few moments ago, called out his team for not punching back in last night's loss to the Brewers. And he's not the only one who noticed how the team looked a little bit flat after that first inning. I, I was listening to the opening drive this morning on 101 ESPN. Uh, Randy Brooke, Danny Mack do a great job there. Um, pointed out how after the three-run first inning by the Brewers, the team looked like they were done. Like they were already, it was already over. No fight, no life. It already rolled over, white flag, tapped out, whatever you want to say, whatever term you want to use, that it was already done. Game was over. And you just can't play that way, right, in, in any sport. You go down a couple touchdowns in the first quarter. You don't quit. There's still three quarters left to go. Basketball, same way. College, you got two halves, you know. You got four quarters in the NBA, NHL. There's three periods to get through. And in baseball, you've got nine innings. you got a lot of chances. And Ali, you know, from those quotes that I gave you, seemed to notice that from his players, too, that I feel like they kind of just all went, boom, and just shrugged. And we're like, oh, we're, we're done. Again, he doesn't want to call out anyone by name, obviously. I think he learned from the O'Neill debacle last year about doing that. But instead, he talks about a group of hitters who aren't there yet and says at some point the frustration has to turn into a little bit of anger. And that's what I think we as a fan base are kind of waiting on and looking for because you can see in the comments and online and anywhere you go when you're talking to a Cardinal fan, most people are pretty darn angry right now. And for good reason. And for good reason. I, I, there's no reason why you shouldn't be upset right now. You can still love your team and be pissed off at them. It's okay. It doesn't mean you hate the Cardinals and you hate, you're not, you're not rooting against them, but you can be upset with how things are going. You know, you, you just lost arguably your, arguably your top bat in Wilson Contreras for the next few months. You're at the first place team's house. 
They knock you on your butt in round one or inning number one. And, you know, Ali is saying, like, what are you going to do? You're going to stand up and come back swinging and try to get back in this game? Or are you going to just let them jab you to death until you crumble? And the Cardinals on Thursday night chose the latter and crumbled. And I, I think we're all getting to that point where there's there's got to be a change of some sort. Something has to change. I don't know what they're going to do and where that change needs to come from. I mean, is it philosophy, personnel? Something, just something's got to be done. I don't care whether it's with coaching, with players, something, something has to be done. You can't keep going down this, this dark path that they're on right now and expect different results anymore. It's not working at all. You've had two years of this now. This is not just this year. These are the, for the most part, the same group of dudes, the core that failed miserably last year. A lot of them are back again. Sure, you jettisoned a couple guys, brought some new life in with like Lance Lynn and Sonny Gray, Kyle Gibson. You brought some relievers in, but a lot of them are young guys. You know, Andrew Kittredge is a veteran, but I mean, is is the relief pitchers are supposed to lead the club? No, I'm talking about the main core position players. For the most part, they're the same and they're rotten right now. Nothing is working. You know, they've made changes with the personnel wise to help fix whatever was missing from the previous year, the last couple of seasons. They're just not playing well together. This They're not winning baseball games. You know, after 2022, remember that you lose Pujols, you lose Yachty. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Well, you got a good core of guys, right? You got some young guys coming up. They're going to take their spots. So what do we got to do? What do we got to replace here when it comes to just Albert and Yachty? You need a catcher. You got to make up for the magical offense that Albert pulled out of his butt that year. Mo goes out and, and grabs Wilson Contreras. He can do both, right? Two birds, one stone type of guy. But the pitching collapses. They go 71 and 91. We all kind of knew that the pitching wasn't up to par. Mo thought, hey, let's give him a shot. These are our dudes. We believe in them. Didn't work, right? So this offseason. They bring in three new starters. They bring a bunch of new relievers in through trades and free agency. Now, the offense can't hit. So the improvements that they did make don't mean anything because they can't score runs to win the ball games in the first place. They're now 86 and 113 since the start of last year. That's a 432 winning percentage with a payroll. And as much as we want to say, spend, 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 go, go buy these big guys, they are spending. They're 12th in the league in spending. They just don't spend it on the right people. Milwaukee is ranked 22nd in the league. They got rid of Corbin Burns and lost Brandon Woodruff and are still kicking the Cardinals' tails. They own them in every way. Mentally and physically, the Reds, who are dealing with similar offensive issues like the Cardinals right now, they've lost eight in a row and still have a better record than the St. Louis Cardinals. Lost one of their key guys, Matt McClain, their shortstop, or he would have played second base probably because Ellie De La Cruz at shortstop, but he, one of their key guys, their number three hitter last year, very, very good, hasn't played this year. Still has a better record than the St. Louis Cardinals. They're 26th in payroll, by the way. The Reds. The Pirates are better than the St. Louis Cardinals right now and have the 29th ranked payroll. And I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> but judging by the attendance you have, uh, a lot of your fan base is quitting on you. And now it looks like the players might be quitting on themselves. Now, what, what's the problem here? Is this, is this Ali leadership issues? Is it the hitting coach? Is it roster construction flaws? Is it a lack of being able to develop your young hitters to be good at the major league level? The answer is yes. <laughs> All of the above. It has been failure after failure after failure. 
in all of these categories over the last few years. And you're seeing it in their record. They haven't been getting better. They're getting worse. And they have been. They've been on a, a downward trajectory for the last few years. They're not winning in the postseason, even when they made it. And nobody knows how to get it right. You're not going to be able to fix it like within the next couple of weeks. There's no way to just fix all of this. Like it's going to take time. You know, you saw like this offseason with like, you know, Hein Bloom coming in. Like they're trying to get things moving in the right direction behind the scenes with pitcher development and all of that. They're trying to get up to speed on that stuff because they let it get to a point where it was so bad that 71 win season, right? Not really a lot of great prospects in your organization. You had to trade a bunch of people away last year at the trade deadline to get a lot of the guys that are your top guys in the organization uh, prospect wise. But how do we get it moving in the right direction this year? How do we save this year? I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had the answer to that. And you're going to find a lot of people in the comments section. Fire this guy. Fire this guy. Fire that guy. Sure. Okay. Still the same group of dudes. Can somebody new come in and be a new voice to motivate these guys, make them better hitters all of a sudden? I don't know. It, it's not like new blood will be coming in player wise. So I don't know. I don't know if it works. It, it works sometimes in other sports. I don't know if it works in baseball that way. I guess it could, but I don't know. We're getting to a point. You saw the, the report online probably yesterday that, you know, somebody, I don't forget who it was. And they said something where like, Ollie's got two to three weeks to turn things around or the Cardinals might move in a different direction. We'll see. I don't know. I want to talk about the two turning points in Thursday's game. I want to go back to the game. And I also want to tell you which position player is accepting a lot of the blame for that loss. We'll talk about it next on Locked on Cardinals. Life insurance is an important safety net for you and your family. The last thing you want to do is, you know, have something tragically go bad to you or one of your loved ones and just not be prepared. It would be a horrible position to be in. But it's not always easy finding the right policy. It, it, it can be time consuming. It can be overwhelming. Sometimes you don't know where to go get the proper information. And that's where Policy Genius can help. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money so that you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help talk you through it. You're not alone. They're going to be there the whole way with you. Your work life insurance policy, it may not offer protection for your family's needs, and it may not come with you if you decide to switch jobs. If something changes, if you get fired, happened to me. Happened to me after the COVID stuff. Check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on MLB or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on MLB. Mother's Day coming up on Sunday. I'm sure you're ready, right? Oh, what's that? You haven't done. What? Okay. All right. You're one of those people. I get it. Easy way to fix this. Get something thoughtful for mom for Mother's Day through DoorDash. Surprise her from wherever you are with fresh bouquets, the latest tech. You can go gift cards, self-care treats, and more to make her day all that much better. Use code Locked on MLB to get 50% off your next order, up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order now on DoorDash. You can pair those flowers that mom likes. I had a conversation because my mom was, was with me just today. Had a conversation with her. It was like, yeah, you know, flowers. Every mom likes them. Tell me you don't love them. She's like, of course we love them. But I also like some other. She's got a small person voice. And uh, and I was like, yeah, I was talking about it on the podcast. I'm like, you would like a gift card to go buy some, uh, you know, cardinal gear or whatever. She started pointing out all the different shirts and hats and stuff that she likes. That's what my mom likes. Find a gift card so she can use it on stuff that she likes, whatever it may be. Everybody's got different tastes. So you won't be able to go wrong. 
you'll get it right. You'll nail it with DoorDash. Plus, you get the convenience of shopping on your phone so you don't have to be the one scrambling, driving around, trying to find that last-minute gift. Don't go there. Order now and get everything you need for Mother's Day on DoorDash. Use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-M-L-B to get 50% off your next order up to $15 when you spend $15 or more on your next flower convenience grocery or retail order now on DoorDash. That's Locked on MLB. Order using DoorDash today. Terms apply. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. And it's now also available on Amazon fire TV and the free fire TV channels app locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows, which cover every league. You can find locked on sports today now available on the free fire TV channels app. So Sonny Gray gets popped for three home runs last night. Very odd, very odd last year in the entire season. With the Minnesota Twins, he gave up eight. He's already at four <laughs> here in 2024. The, the Cardinals have given up a lot of gopher balls, let's be honest. Uh, bad night on the mound for Sonny Gray. But Nolan Arenado is also accepting some blame for what happened on Thursday. After the game, Nato said this to the media. Sonny has been so good for us, and he's picked us up every game. I know he would sit here and say that wasn't one of his better outings, but if I pick him up in that first... We're probably not sitting here talking about this. Our pitchers have been picking us up the whole year. Now, the play in question is the ground ball hit to him with runners on first and second and one out in the first inning. If you didn't see it, grounder to Nato. Instead of whipping it to second base to try to turn the double play that way, he instead tries to tag the runner who's coming from second base going to third base. And uh, it was Wilson Contreras' brother, William. And William is able to avoid the tag. So instead, he's safe at third. The runner who was going from first to second was safe at second. They did get the out at first base, but it didn't work out. They didn't turn two. They didn't end the inning. And we've seen Nato do this place, this whole play before. And I, I would say probably, what, 97 out of 100 times it's going to work for Nolan Arenado because that's how good he is. It didn't this time. And instead, it extended the inning to Reese Hoskins. You get a wild pitch that scores a run, and then Hoskins blasts a two-run shot to make it three to nothing, and game set match, really, because Cardinals only scored one more run the rest of the way. Um, Nato continued talking about this, saying, I made a mistake. What I should have done is slow down, tag, make sure I just get the third out, the third base out. I thought I saw him kind of take off right away, so I thought I had a chance to field it and tag him like I tried, but he got out of the way. I've got to make that play and just slow it down there. My instincts were just make a tag and try and turn a double play and get out of it. I made a mistake. I've got to pick up Sonny there and get the out at third and just keep that runner from being in scoring position. I feel bad. I messed up there. That, that inning is on me. The next turning point that also involves Nolan Arenado is in the fifth inning. Score is four to one. Brewers, uh, they go up. We get, the, we get the one run from the solo dinger from Lars Newtbar, who now has two in his last two games, so that's good news. Then Newt's starting to hit with some authority. That's great, because we need somebody to. Uh, but the Cardinals load the bases. Load the bases. Nobody out. After a pair of walks, you also get a single by Michael Ciani, who's the only Cardinal in the lineup last night, who ended up getting two hits in the game. The only guy who had multiple hits. Who thought that Michael Ciani would have to be our leading hitter? Like, isn't that crazy? Anyway, Brewers go to the bullpen. They pull their starter. They know that two of the next three hitters are left-handers. It's uh, Newt Bar, Nato, Alec Burleson. So they bring in a southpaw. Smart managerial move, right? Newt pounds a sinker that goes right to the third baseman. They throw the runner out at home, get one out. They secure the one out. Base is still loaded one out now, all right? Ball hasn't left the infield. Then Arenado steps in, and the first pitch which if you go back and look, it's inside. It's not a pitch right over the heart of the plate that Arenado should be hammering. It's a pitch that's inside that he shouldn't be swinging at in the first place, but he does. And he pops out to the third baseman on the first pitch. Nothing drives me more mad about hitters when in a situation where all the pressure is on the pitcher. The bases are loaded. He has got nowhere to put you. Three-run game. So he doesn't necessarily have to, you know, 
throw one right over the heart of play. Doesn't have to serve one up right down the middle, but he's gonna be he's gonna try to be close. His first pitch, he swings at it anyway. That that couldn't have been in the zone that Nada was looking for, right? Couldn't have been. So I got it anyway. Pops out. Two outs. Bases are still loaded. Alec Burleson has a great at bat. All right. I'm not saying that Alec Burleson did anything wrong here. Solid eight pitch at bat. Swung at a couple pitches. They weren't even close, though. He flies out to right field despite Chip Carey's best efforts at making us believe that it was going to be a grand slam. I mean, when he started the call, swing and a drive. And I'm like, where are you going with this, bro? Because <laughs> it landed in front of the warning track. Lands in the glove, inning over. Cardinals are now one for nine and bases loaded in nobody out situations. They got a couple walks. What would he do? but one for nine in situations where you can do massive damage at the plate and really cripple your opponent. And they don't do it. They can't do it right now. They finish 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position on Thursday. Uh, Nato talked about that situation as well after the game, saying, I've just got to be better. I had chances with bases loaded, and I popped up again. And that hurts because I feel like that's my job. They got on base for me, and I've just got to be better. I haven't been what I would like to be. I know I'm putting the work. I know I'm doing fine on both sides of the ball, but it's not at the level that this team needs. I've got to find a way to clean it up and pick it up. And I commend Nolan Arenado for stepping up and saying this stuff, but it can't just be on Nolan Arenado. You, you, it's, you can't. He's been one of the few brighter spots when it comes to the offense on this team. And now with Willie gone, he's already feeling like he's under even more pressure to be the one guy that has to come through all the time. And yeah, he kind of needs to be, but he shouldn't have to be. Does that make sense? And if he's going to start pressing, that means he's going to have really crappy at bats and he's going to go in the tank too. So we got to get somebody moving, whether it's new Gorman Goldie, he needs help. They all need help. Will they show any sort of fight and fire tonight or the rest of the weekend? Or do they get swept into oblivion and end up 10 games out and have to fire everyone? We're going to find out. Some serious drama going on with the St. Louis Cardinals, and it's not fun drama, though. Lance Lynn on the bump tonight. Would love to see some fire out of Lance. Maybe he, he's got something that can get us going. Maybe Ollie needs to get tossed, like I mentioned earlier in the show. Maybe he needs to just get tossed for something just to see if these guys got any heart, if they got any stones left on them. Thanks for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like and subscribe on YouTube. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. I'll see you next time on Locked on Cardinals. Hopefully, good news when we talk again on Monday.